So last time with section 9.1, we talked about um, measuring length. And so we had inches and feet and miles for the English system and centimeters, meters, kilometers were the common metric ones that we talked about. So now moving into section 9.2, we're going to be talking about area and volume. So the area is a region within a boundary. And you may have heard this term area before. It's a region within a boundary. It's a land. It's very simple. It's where you live. And this is just a point of one square centimeter. One centimeter, so then it'd be a square centimeter could be one inch by one inch and it'd be a square inch, okay? But we don't know the units, so we're just going to call it a square unit for right now. Most of you know, guys know the formula for area of a rectangle, which is length times width. And so if you have a rectangle that measures three by four, three units by four units, well, you know that you're supposed to do what with these numbers? Another way that you can look at it that maybe you haven't seen, you know, thought about before is that you could actually put 12 squares inside of this rectangle that measure one by one. And so if I cut it across four columns, because it's four across the top, and then make three rows, So now we have 12 squares inside of this rectangle, which is where those 12 square units come from. Okay, so that's the thought process of square units there. So if you talk about the English system, one square foot is equal to 144 square inches. One square yard is equal to nine square feet. One acre, now this is a measurement of area. Notice that it doesn't have a square on there. It's, it's only for area. One acre is 43,560 square feet, or it's also the same as 4,840 <laughs> square yards. And one square mile is equal to 640 acres. Now, by the way, all of these are approximations. Okay, they've been rounded at some point. Um, well, actually, sorry, I was looking at the English to metric. Now, according to this chart, they're all equal. And if you think about a square foot, okay, so maybe it's about that size, one foot by one foot, okay, that's one square foot. But we also know that one foot is equal to how many inches? Twelve. So this would be the same as 12 inches by 12 inches. And so if we were to find the area of that square, it would be 12 times 12, which is 144. Okay, so this is where these units come from. They didn't just, you know, create them from scratch. They, you just look at the fact that if you have one foot by one foot, that's the same as 12 inches by 12 inches, and it gives you those square units. So if for some reason you've forgotten one of these, you can construct it. You can think about what does that mean and multiply the units, and that's what's going to give you those <laughs> units of area. Same thing for the square yard. If this is one yard by one yard, then that's the same as three feet by three feet, which gives you nine square feet. Okay? So that's where these units these from the English system come from. Okay, now these are all approximations, even though the PowerPoint has equal signs. These have been rounded to some point. So one square inch is equal to 6.5 square centimeters. One square foot is equal to 0 0.09 square meters. One square yard is equal to 0.8 square meters. One square mile is equal to 2.6 square kilometers. And one acre is equal to 0.4 hectare.
So notice that the ones that are underlined, those are the fill in the blanks on your handout. So make sure that you catch those measurements there. But, you know, if you do miss any of these charts, they're all in your book, starting on page 512 and 513. Now, the same concept is done here where you have a square inch. Okay, not very big. So one inch by one inch. And to get our square centimeters, we just have to know, well, how many centimeters are in an inch? Do you guys remember that from last time? I think it's 2.54. So if you had 2.54 by 2.54, multiply it together, and you get approximately equal to 6.5. Okay, so same concept as the English um, system there. Now, this is where the dimensional analysis comes in really handy because this is not as straightforward as what you had before with a foot and 12 inches and so on. So remembering when to multiply and divide could get tricky. So dimensional analysis can help you to just lay it all out, and you'll know exactly how to combine your units. Okay, um, a property is on the market for $415,000 for 1.8 acres. Now let's say that you are a real estate agent, and you have clients from outside the U.S., and they're looking to purchase some property in the U.S., well, if, if they live outside the U.S., then they probably are not as familiar with the English system. They're more familiar with the metric system. So it could help you to know how to convert the area to hectares because that's what they would be familiar with. So we have to <coughs> convert 1.8 acres to hectares. So first we think about, well, what do we know about acres and hectares? Okay, one acre is 0 0.4 hectares. And so now we can use dimensional analysis. The nice thing is, if you get comfortable with dimensional analysis, it works exactly the same way for the entire chapter. So you start out with what you know, 1.8 acres over 1. And then you have to make your unit fraction with 1 acre and 0.4 hectares. Okay, so we've got 1.8 acres over 1. So if we're going to make our unit fraction here, what should go in the denominator? <coughs> think about units before you think about numbers. Okay. We have acre up here, so that should always go diagonal to the bottom. Okay, whatever you start with should always go down there. And that's why I asked about the denominator first, because that's always the easiest <coughs> one to place. So if this is acre, then HA should go up there. And now you can fill in your numbers. Well, according to this comparison, we have one acre to 0.4 hectares. And now you just have to multiply your fractions together. Okay, so multiplying across, we get 0.72 HA. Okay, maybe you're comparing a lot of different properties, and so it might be helpful if you get the price per hectare to help your client know which, which one's the better buy, okay? Which property are they getting for the least amount of money? And so this brings us back to Chapter 1. We did some price per unit problems, and if you remember, a price per unit means it tells you exactly what to do here. Per could be a slash as well, right? price per unit, and so you take your price and you divide it by the number of units you have. Okay, so what was your price? 415,000, and how many hectares do you have? 0.72 hectares, so 415,000 divided by 0.72. I'm not sure that this one rounded correctly in the PowerPoint, so it should have been rounded up to 0.8 Nine, right, it should have been rounded up if we went to the penny. If we went to the dollar, then it would be rounded up to 389 here. 
Okay, so be paying attention to what Math Excel asks you to round to so that you're rounding correctly on there. All right, what does this mean though? Okay, if you have lots of different properties, maybe another property is 1.5 hectares, another property is 1 hectare, another one you're looking at is 0.9 hectare. If you get it to this amount, then you would see what the price would be for 1 hectare no matter what the property would be. And so whichever one is the lowest amount would be the lowest price given that the properties are all equally the same. Okay, because obviously that's going to make a difference in a sale. Location makes a difference, what's around it makes a difference, and so on. But at least you have a comparison. Another way that you could use this number is, let's say that the owner of the property that's selling it has more property adjacent to it, and your client would like to know, can they purchase a whole hectare? You can offer, you know, the comparative price for more property because you know about based on what they've already priced their current property at. Okay, so there's a lot of applications for finding the price per unit of something. Okay, so now we're going to talk about capacity. So this is how much an item can hold. So two pints is equal to one quart. Four quarts is equal to a gallon. One gallon is equal to 128 ounces. And one cup is equal to eight ounces. And so this is more for capacity of liquid. If, you're, um, if you like to bake or, or cook, then you're probably pretty familiar with these units. If, um, if you just watch your water intake every day, then you may be familiar with these units also. Okay, so those underlying numbers are your fill in the blanks. Okay, so if we compare volume and capacity, volume is how much space is inside the object. So let's say that you're looking at a cube and the volume is one cubic yard. Okay, that's how much air is in there, if you will. And so that means that it can hold about 200 gallons. Okay, if you think about, you know, this, this could be a good size fish tank, if you will. Okay, if you have this. This is a little smaller than a yard, probably. Now we'll talk a, a little bit more about volume in, in chapter 10. But this means that you have a cube that is one yard by one yard by, and one yard tall. So you can fill this to 200 gallons up to the top. All right, so that's what these two differences mean between volume and capacity. Okay, so capacity is usually about liquid what we're doing there. So if your cube <coughs> was one cubic foot, then it could hold about 7.48 gallons. And if your cube had a volume of 231 cubic inches, then that's about one gallon. Okay, so your fill in the blanks are 200, 7.48, and then on the left, 231. A pool has a volume of 10,000 cubic feet. How many gallons of water does it hold? If you ever buy a property with a pool, okay, something that I did a few years ago, and you need to figure out how, what chemicals to put inside of it, you, unless the, the specs, you know, you got the specs of the pool and it tells you how many gallons are in the pool, you won't know this unless you measure the pool itself. Okay, so you have to measure the length and the width and then estimate the depth. And it's the first thing the pool guy asked me when I called him about, you know, the chemicals that I needed in the pool. So you measure it and you get either cubic feet or cubic yards, however you decide to measure it. Most likely you're probably going to get feet, okay, because you're taking your tape measure and you're measuring out the feet. So now you have to figure out how many gallons of water in it so that you know how much chemicals you need in that pool. So again, we can use dimensional analysis for this. So you're starting out with 10,000 cubic feet, so that's what you put over one. Okay, 10,000 cubic feet over one, and then you have to figure out what unit fraction to multiply. Well, what do you know about cubic <coughs> feet and gallons? Okay, so one cubic foot 
is approximately 7.48 gallons. So start out with that 10,000 cubic feet over one. And then when you make your unit fraction, remember that the cubic feet has to go diagonal to the denominator, which leaves gallons in the numerator. So whatever you start with has to go diagonal to the denominator. And then what you're looking for goes up in the numerator. So that's what your unit fraction should look like. Everybody okay with that? Any questions? So your cubic feet will cancel. And so you get 74,800 gallons. Okay, so this is probably a large pool, maybe at a hotel or resort. If you're in charge of taking care of it, then you have to be able to do this stuff. You have to be able to know how many gallons are in your pool. Okay, so now taking a look at the metric system. So when we were looking at length, the key unit of length was meter. Now we're looking at capacity and the key unit of length is liter. Okay, just to give you a little bit of a comparison here, one liter is equal to 1.06 quarts. So quart being part of the English system. So the nice thing about the metric system is that every unit works the same way. We can create a metric line. And so again, it looks like a little number line with seven hash marks on it. There are more units than what we are looking at. We are just looking at the main seven units on each metric line. It does go on further into more decimal values. But in the middle, put your liter. And again, if you like the King Henry died drinking chocolate milk, that still works, except you don't have the word Monday in the middle. Okay, that's where your unit goes. So King Henry died, and then skip your leader, drinking <laughs> chocolate milk. And it's on each side. And make sure that you're using a capital L for leader. And again, it's all based on tens. So notice that there's 10 liters in a deciliter. There's 100 liters in a hectoliter, and so on. As you go down to deci, centimilli, it's smaller, okay, but it's moving your decimal over either one space to the left or one space to the right, depending on where you're going. So the conversions work exactly the same way as they did for meter, where you just move your decimal place so many spaces, however many spaces you're moving along the metric line. Okay, so I know that we complain a lot about the price of gas. And in other countries, the price of gas is worse. So think about that when you're, you know, complaining about the price of gas. Usually what we're spending, you know, 375, 380 right now for a gallon. How many quarts are in a gallon? Four. In another country, they're probably spending $3 for a liter. Okay, so. That's why they have <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Most people don't drive in other countries, okay, because it's too expensive. <laughs> All right, so now let's compare the volume with the metric system to capacity. And so similar chart as to what you had before. I don't think that this is on your handout because we're going to look at it again in the next section. But one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. Okay, so think about this is bigger than a cubic centimeter, okay? But it's small, so you can picture that. You can fill this with one milliliter, okay? It's about this big, okay? The, the size of my eye, maybe. And you can fill that up with one milliliter. So one cubic decimeter is equal to one liter. Do you notice how it's a one to one on most of these? Now, they also put in there that one cubic decimeter is the same as 1,000 cubic centimeters, just in case you needed that unit instead. And then one cubic meter is equal to one kiloliter. So if you had five cubic centimeters, how many milliliters would you need? Five, because it's a one-to-one -one comparison. If you even think about this from a dimensional analysis point of view, 
okay, one cubic centimeter, I'm sorry, five cubic centimeters. And so we know we need cubic centimeters down here and milliliters here, but it's a one-to-one. -one. So notice you're just multiplying by one. It does not change the number. It just changes the units. So whenever you have a one-to-one -one comparison, that means you don't change the amount, just change the units. And that can give you a little bit of a shortcut there. Okay, so going to 9.2. Okay, so some of the uh, problems that you're going to be getting is going to ask you just to figure out the area of the object. Okay, so taking a look at this one, you want to know how many square units are in here. So you don't need to have any fancy uh, formula. They just want you to count how many squares are in here. Now notice that some of the squares are sliced in, in half, but notice that they're sliced diagonally of a square, that they've perfectly cut it diagonally. Okay, so you've got, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. So count all of these and see how many whole squares you have. And then with the diagonal ones, count two of them for one square. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 going diagonally, plus all the other squares that you see in there. That's all they want you to do. Okay, so don't, um, don't overthink that problem and just type in how many you see. Okay, and then here we have some dimensional analysis ones. Let me see if I can find one that does not convert directly. Okay, so they're all very similar to this one. We have 10 centimeters squared, and you want to convert it to inches squared. So remember, always start out with what you're given over 1. And since we have centimeters squared here, we want to put that diagonally down in the denominator, which means inches squared has to be up top. Okay, well, here's the chart that tells us that 1 cubic, I'm sorry, 1 square inch is equal to 6.5 square centimeters. So go ahead and plug in your numbers, 1 and 6.5. Your square centimeters are going to cancel. And so this tells you that you have 10 over 6.5, or in other words, you have to divide. Okay, so you go ahead and divide 10 divided by 6.5, 1.53. Okay, well, let's give, let's give a few decimals there. So 1.53846, okay. A lot of people miss the problems in the homework because they forget how to round. And it's a simple concept that you guys learned a while ago, but if you're not practicing it, you forget the simple stuff. So if you're rounding to the nearest hundredth, that means that that's two decimal places because we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on. So we're rounding to this one, and don't forget that you're looking to the number to the right of it. If the number to the right is five or greater, then you're rounding up. If the number to the right is less than 5, then you're keeping it the same. Okay, so this means that we have to round to 1.54 because the next number is an 8. All right, so plugging in 1.54. Good job. Okay, so 17.5 hectares to acres. So start out with what you know over 1. And then looking at the chart, we see that one acre is equal to 0.4 hectares. So remember that hectares has to go diagonal from where we started from, which means we have 1 over 0.4. So in your calculator, you need to do 17.5 divided by 0.4. And what do we get? Even? Okay, so it ends right there at 7.5, and it wanted you to round to the nearest hundredth. You're already at the nearest hundredth, so you're good. Okay, so that was 43.75. Excellent. Okay, so 2,800 gallons to cubic yards. Okay, 
Okay, so again, starting out with what you know over one, hopefully you'll find the value with dimensional analysis that it works the same every time. Doesn't matter what units you're looking at. And so since we're starting out with gallons, that goes across diagonally in the denominator, cubic yards of top. And so we're looking right here, one cubic yard is about 200 gallons, which means you have to divide 2,800 over 200. And you get 14? Okay, so 14 cubic yards. Again, it says round to the nearest hundredth as needed. It is not needed here, so you just type in your answer. Okay, on occasion there are problems in the homework that I don't address in the PowerPoint. And normally that's because there's a really good example in the book on it. Now today I have time to actually show it, but Focusing on example number two on page 512, then you see a, a question about population density. So um, again, I just want to remind you that a book is supposed to be a valuable resource for you guys in the class. You paid for it for a reason. So if you ever get to a problem, you're not quite sure, I don't remember seeing this in class, then that might be because I purposely left you know, something that's a good example in the book. So don't forget that those things are there. So in here it says 1980, in 1980 a certain country's population was 76,495,365 and its area was 2,999,760 square miles. Find the population density of the country to the nearest tenth expressed in people per square kilometer. Okay, so first of all, if you take a look at that example number two on page 512, it gives you a formula for population density, which is population over area. So we were given a population, and we were also given an area. Notice the unit of area that was given. Right, so they give it to you in square miles, but they want you to have it in square kilometers. So it's up to you if you want to convert now or convert later. But it might be easier to go ahead and convert those square miles to square kilometers now, and then plug in the information into your formula. So the first thing you need to do is remember how does a square mile compare to a square kilometer? One square mile is approximately equal to 2.6 square kilometers. So we're starting out with 2999760 square miles over one. And we have to convert this to square kilometers. Square miles goes in the denominator leaving square kilometers in the numerator. Okay, so we're multiplying 2999760 times 2.6, 7799376, okay, right, square kilometers. Okay, so now we have a population and we have amount of square kilometers that we can substitute into this formula that we have over here. And so our population is 76495365 divided by 7799376. So you want to go ahead and divide and get a decimal answer there. Okay, now population is measuring how many what? People, yes, people. So 
So we have this many people per square kilometer. That's what that number means. Okay, this many people per square kilometer. Now, it wanted us to round to the nearest tenth as needed. Okay, so it's approximately 9.8 people per square kilometer. That's not too dense of an area. It's not super spread out either. I mean, there's, you know, about 10 people in a square kilometer in this region. Okay, that's, you know, now they're not all going to be nice and spread out like that, right? You're going to have, you know, apartment complexes, a whole bunch of apartment complexes in one square kilometer, and they're all stacked, and so there's a lot of people in this area, and then as you spread further out, they're more spread out. But if you were to spread all the people out, you would have space to, to, you know, move your arms, right? You would not be that. You could run around. You could have some space, not too dense. You go to a country like Japan, there's going to be a lot more people um, in, in per square kilometer. Okay, so it, it gives you an idea of how dense a certain country might be. All right, so let's type in our answer, see how well we did. We've got 9.8. Fantastic. And we're measuring, we want to express the area of a business envelope. Okay, the area of a business envelope. Will we use square meters, square kilometers, or square centimeters? Okay, right. So this is more a common sense problem. Okay, so square centimeters. Excellent. Excellent. 